morning, everyone. It's really great to be here again. Um, 13th time, and, and um, you know, we're excited. Every, every year it's, it's bigger, and, and every year it looks better. And AI, of course, is doing a great job organizing this event every, every year, so, so thanks a lot. Um, I, I'm going to talk briefly, about five minutes or so, about some, some insights you know, came across and some, some thoughts that, that led us um, to do some things over the past year, which I hope will, you'll, you'll find interesting, but I'm not going to bore you too much. Um, I do want to focus on, on the aspects, not only of the award itself, but also what the review process withholds to, to companies beyond the bottom line. And, and as I'm sure some of you know, uh, for the past several years, researchers have looked into the value of non-dilutive funding to, to the life science industry. Um, there were some studies, uh, like, like the Harvard 2015 review of the NIH sponsored research direct contribution uh, to the private sector, to the life science industry. Uh, in terms of patents, in terms of uh, drugs, uh, value, um, and I think, I think the results of these studies are really an important testament to the strong bond uh, between the industry uh, and the federal non dilutive programs. Um, now again, the value of an NIH award is shown and it's proven and it's incredibly significant, both the actual dollar value received and beyond. Um, but in fact, the, those, those studies have shown that an incremental $10 million increase to the NIH budget of $32 billion a year um, will lead to 2.3 uh, new patents uh, registered. But more importantly, a 1% increase in NIH funding will lead to half a percent increase in private sector patents. And that is a direct contribution to the value of, of your companies. Um, it's, it's a direct contribution to the drugs, to the new devices, to, to greater value to the community and to the industry at large. Um, it shows that the very same $10 million increase to the NIH um, budget will lead to $14.7 million increase in drug sales. There is a direct correlation there, um, which, is, which is incredible in, in my mind, and not too many people appreciate it, not within the industry, the CEOs, the executives, and not within the, the investment community. In addition, the value of the review process that is undertaken by the NIH, by BARDA, by DOD, uh, all the other non elusive funding programs and that is led primarily by, by top researchers worldwide. Um, the value of the review process itself, and not only the end result of it, whether funded or not, is proven to be, to be great and has great merit on, on its own. That study showed, and, and for me that was the most interesting part of it, that a one-point improvement in the percentile score on an NIH application funded or not, predicts 15% more follow-on patents. A one, percent, uh, a one point uh, increase to the, to the score will lead to 15% more patents registered by the, by, by the, uh, the researchers um, submitting that application. Um, and while we at Freemind don't have empirical uh, evidence, we haven't gone through the study ourselves, um, we believe the value of both the process, the review process, and the result to be clear, and, and we work based on, on that value for, for the past two, two decades now. We've seen firsthand how the review process leads companies to better research, to more structured strategies, to improve long-term plans and implementation, and to greater scientific success that is later translated into patents, into drugs, into medical devices, into financial success, into high-valued exits. We've witnessed clients start very small with an SBR Phase I award or an R21 submission that have been translated later into phenomenal exits and business success. And so in 18 years, we have met thousands of companies and we have seen great potential and an important role uh, the industry plays uh, in saving lives, and we're very, very proud to be part of that process, part of that industry. Um, but as important as we believe our role to be, we've not been in a position uh, before to directly contribute to this effort um, until today. So I'm very happy to share with you that in the past year, uh, more specifically in the past six months, 
Freemind, while continuing its ongoing support um, to industry's effort to maximize non dilutive funding potential and submit more application, win more awards, we've also established the Freemind investment arm. And while starting very small, Freemind is practicing a due diligence process that is based to the most part on our own experience working with our clients, understanding them, knowing what they do, um, but also is based on the detailed feedback we receive, our clients receive, through the non-dilutive funding review process. And we use those two aspects, the review process, the score, and our experience knowing these people, our clients, um, as, an invest, as, an, as, as the assessment basis for, an investment, for investment opportunities. Through this process to date, we've invested in, directly in two companies, and we are in final negotiation stages of, uh, with the third company, hopefully to be, to be completed very soon. Uh, and we definitely believe in, in that process, both in the knowledge of a company um, and, and most primarily in the, in the score system, in the, in the process leading towards um, the review, the, the ability of, of judging the science, the, the uh, potential through these, these processes. Um, we believe we should practice what we preach. And so we, we strongly believe in detailed, strategic, systematic, professional process that is aimed at multi-submission multi strategy for non-dilutive funding uh, sources. And, and we believe that process of multiple submission holds uh, great value to our clients, to the life science company itself, whichever company it may be, and, and to the investment community and to the investors directly investing in that company which, you know, right now we're, we're, we're starting to be part of that community as well. Um, we believe the results of a submission, whether funded or not, while very important, um, represent only a part of the value that this process holds. And we believe a company's ability to go through such a process successfully, multiple submission, bears great meaning and insight. Our speakers today, uh, at the 13th Annual non dilutive Funding Summit uh, represent uh, a, this connection. They represent a connection between the non dilutive funding agencies and the life science industry. Uh, the connection is growing very strong every year, um, and, and, and to a great extent, this is the theme of our, of our uh, summit today, this connection. Uh, leaders like uh, Matthew Portnoy, the NIH SBR program manager, uh, who's running virtually the largest life science industry-focused program within the federal government, um, is actually responsible directly to infusing $900 million a year to the industry, to companies. Uh, that, that's, that's a huge number. Uh, individuals such as uh, J.B. Phillips, who will follow me, uh, of the U.S. Army Medical Research Command, uh, people Joe, like Joe Larson uh, of BARDA and NINDS, uh, Charles Sywin, uh, they're all important players uh, in our industry. Um, and, and they represent literally the largest available life science R&D budget in the world. Um, we're very proud to be able to bring forth this discussion today, uh, the discussion that will revolve around the great contribution and how industry can better understand, approach, and raise more and, and, and very substantial amounts of funding. And I'm very much excited about the direction the industry is taking and the important leadership role of the non dilutive funding agencies in, in this process. Thrilled about this summit, really excited about uh, today and the great program they all had prepared for us. I'm very thankful for you all to being here, uh, and I hope you enjoy the day. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate it.